Apparently everyone treats crank bearings like cam bearings and just decides to not look at them. And I'm guilty of it too, but it's a service item you should totally handle. And uh, I'm going to go through how to do uh, PTO side crank bearing grease today. First thing you got to do is uh, take off the primary clutch. Uh, this looks like a, I think it's a 13 16th. Yeah, 13 16 so Just zip it off with the impact. Comes right out. It's kind of got a long thread on it, I think, because there's a thread inside the uh, inner sheave. This time I'm going to use a uh, actual ski -Doo clutch puller. See, a lot of people do the water trick, and I, I don't know. I don't trust it. Um, just for 30 bucks, it's not worth it to me. So they tell you to lube up the uh, the very tip of it because that's going to do the pushing and also spinning, and then also the, the impact, and you're going right. Guess that's what you get for trying to do things the right way. Clutch puller was an epic fail because I don't have a clutch holder, and I hit it with a half-inch impact. And uh, it didn't seem to work, but uh, the stock bolt and the water trick worked. Obviously, that's all over YouTube. You just wrap that bolt, the stock bolt, in Teflon tape. Give it a few threads on. Fill that hole with water. You got to tip the sled on its side. And then just zip it with the gun. And I was worried about it. And then it just went boom and popped off. So, got to watch out for it popping off on you, though. There are four T30s in there that you're going to have to take off. Uh, and that's the cover for the crank bearings. And... Um, yeah, so they're T30s, and when you go to when you go to put that on, just give it a little tap at the back of the ratchet to make sure you're like straight on there and you're actually in there deep enough. If you can't get them out with the Torx bed or it strips, go ahead and you can smash an Allen on there or the next size up Torx. Uh, the heads are like ridiculously soft, so it's easy to get one to bite. And um, you know these are at any hardware store ever. So to get the crank seal out, I found it. I mean, I guess you could use a seal puller, but I found it easiest to kind of take a flat blade screwdriver and dig in and then pull out. Yes, yeah, I already got it out, but dig in and then pull out, and the thing seems stiff enough to walk out all as a whole. I only needed one screwdriver and one pry, one good pry. So these all look overall pretty good. I mean, right now you're looking at, obviously, the uh, if it focuses, you're looking at the uh, actual cage of the bearings, and what I pretty much did was scoop it all out I'm, I'm gonna spend some more time scooping all the crap out but scoop out as much grease you can with a screwdriver try not to be invasive or scratch anything and then um yeah just you know paper towel pull it out um and then what i did was i turned over the engine with the pull start a little like slowly like don't like I, i'm sure nothing would happen if you kind of ripped on it but go ahead and do that and it seems to push some of the grease out because I'm trying to get as much as this old and possibly gritty and contaminated with fuel grease out as soon as possible. One thing I should say is that uh, this is probably a good time to check for a crank run out. Um, I think 3000s is the spec. I'll, I'll, I'll post exactly what it is in the bio, but I, I'm pretty sure 3000s is the spec. And so this clutch surface looks cracked, but it, it's actually not, which is just crazy to me. I originally thought it was cracked. But uh, you'll see you got glazing and the overall pattern across the clutch is, you know, the pattern in which the belt rides. But if you take some scotch bright and just go at it quite a bit, you'll get kind of like a tangential, tangential pattern. So you're going to want to go like, like that and then spin it and just keep going like that. Just work your way around and it's gonna the surface is gonna come back quite a bit like my surface actually looks really good right now i think i might uh, i think that's good enough to run so you're gonna want to do that to inner and outer sheaves the outer sheave is nasty and uh your secondary clutch so now that you cleaned everything out of there and you know did the best you could you're not supposed to use solvents or anything like that like no brake clean degreaser or nothing so what i did was i turned it over a little bit and then kept kind of picking it out and whatnot but then, you know, you take your syringe full of the Isoflex grease and only Isoflex grease. And you do, the spec is 10 to 20 milliliters of grease in there. I did 15 and it seems to be full. I turned it over a few times and that's about it. And the uh, torque for the clutch bolt is 89 foot pounds. So for me, the only way to get this to the... Uh, the recommended torque value, what I did was I took a pry bar in here and I kind of bumped it right up against the engine and then held it up here and then, you know, went torquing down there. But definitely an awkward maneuver, but it worked. 